Is it record? Yep. All right. So we are recording this, just FYI, um, because we can then put this session on our Facebook group, which is where you also find all of the previously recorded programs that we've done. So if there's any other crafty stuff that you've got a mind to do, we've got uh, supply lists, videos all on our Facebook teen archive list. Um, today we're doing paracord bracelets. Uh, so all of you should have received, if you reserved a kit at the library, you've got a bundle of paracord and you've got a clasp. This is a very low supply kit. You don't need a whole lot, um, but there are a couple other things you might want to have on hand uh, that'll just make your life, one that'll make your life easier and one that you'll will be using at the very end that you'll probably want to actually get your parents help with um, just so you don't burn yourself so one thing that's ha handy to have is some tape any kind of tape will do I'm doing this on a surface so I'm going to be taping down part of it so if you need to go run and find some tape um, feel free to do that or something to like clip it or weigh it down um, just so it's not sliding all over the place we're going to be tying knots in it and if you've ever made like friendship bracelets before you know it's really hard to do that if you can't anchor it somewhere so that being said i am going to switch this camera around so that you're looking at my table instead of at me so hang on just a sec and there we go all right so now you can see my table view all right, if you have one of our kits, you've, like I said, got a nice big long thing of paracord. You probably won't need to use all of it um, unless you just happen to have a really, really huge wrist. Um, I did do a sample. Um, I made one that could easily fit on a small dog's neck. So it could have been a dog collar, honestly, uh, instead of a bracelet, but um, I'll show you how to kind of get it sized a little bit closer to where it'll work for you. So the first thing you need to do, and if you didn't get a kit from us and you need to buy paracord, um, these kits have about, um, it's about 10 feet worth of paracord. And the general rule of thumb is to have about a foot per inch that you're gonna, so about a foot of cord uh, is going to equal about one inch of woven bracelet. Uh, it's just kind of a general. Um, but if you got the kits, then what you've got is going to be enough for sure. Um, but you can definitely buy paracord at craft stores. You can buy um, you can buy it online. Um, we got these kits from Amazon. Um, they're actually really nice because they come with these nice pre-cut sections, and they give you your uh, the clasps as well which is really handy so you've got a clasp and you've got some cord first thing to do is find the middle of your cord so just kind of fold it in half stretch it out and find that end piece so like so you got basically a loop at the end And you're going to want to go ahead and separate your clasp so you got the two ends there and it doesn't actually matter which end you start with but we're basically going to do a slip knot in the clasp so um, you're going to take your little loop here I'm trying to get this in front of the camera you're going to take your little loop you're going to slide it through you know it's not easy because it's kind of thick and the, there's not a lot of space there you slide it through so that it's on like that. And then we're gonna pull the end, all this extra cord, we're gonna pull it through this loop. So it's basically making a slip knot on the end of your clasp. So like that. For some reason I'm having trouble seeing myself. Here. Okay, that'll do. All right. So once we've got our slip knot in there, that's half of it. The other half, 
we're going to use our other half of the clip. And you don't want to get this twisted. So make sure that they're kind of, it's all flat. You don't have any twists in it before you take these two ends and slide them through the other end of the clasp. And you just pull them on, pull it on through. So you've got it kind of sliding around here. So now to figure out how you're gonna want it, how you're gonna fit your wrist, what I like to do is take it and kind of clasp it together. So I get kind of a rough idea of where I want it to hit. Now remember that the paracord itself is gonna add, like once you start weaving, it's gonna add a little bit of bulk. So you definitely don't want something that's like, you know, really tight around your wrist because you won't really be able to wear it afterwards. So you wanna give yourself a little bit of space, um, a little bit of room there. And I'm trying to pin it in place. I open my clasp, which is for some reason sticking. There we go. All right. So I've got about mm, five, six inches here in my clasp. Right. So that'll fit my wrist. Um, and it's okay if it's not exact. You can. Um, if you wanted to mark it on there or something, you could, but uh, what we're gonna do is, okay. So this part is going to be the part we're working with. So we're gonna actually, I'm gonna tape this part down to the table so that it stays put while I am weaving here. Okay, so we've got, our two cords and they're really long at this point so it's going to feel maybe a little awkward but that's okay because we can work with this just be patient all right so we're going to start on the left hand side and we're going to make our first knot so our paracord here is going to go underneath this so that you're kind of making like a four but it's underneath here and it's going to go actually over this cord on the side here. So it's four, but going over. And then we're going to take our other half that we didn't have done anything what yet with yet. Blah. And it is going to go up through this. We're going to go yeah through this loop here. And so you can see already we've got a bit of a knot starting. So we're gonna pull that up tight. And this is a, really our last chance. If you wanna double check your sizing, now is a good time to do it once you've got that first knot in. So maybe you slipped like I did and accidentally made it a little shorter than you wanted to. <laughs> yeah? You got someone asking if you could pull down. Sure, yeah. Sorry, I can't see anybody or the chat right now, so yeah. So I'm gonna actually readjust let us, let my little. Okay. Actually, I want to do this the other way. That's okay. And the thumbs up. Thumbs up, all right. So everybody's made sure that theirs will fit them and everything, we're good, all right. Taping that back down again. And let's see here. I think I need a bigger piece of tape. This table is very slippery. All right, now it's gonna stay put. So, the first knot is basically how you're gonna do all of these, except they're just gonna go in reverse some, um, every other side. So since we started with this side first, we're gonna start now with our right-hand side. It's gonna go under. 
Sorry. It's okay. We had someone ask, wait, how did you do that? How did I do what? That's what I asked. Okay. I think, I mean, we could unmute people if you want, if that'd be easier. People so shout out. Type it or oh, okay. Yeah I, can yeah, I can go back and start. Let me start it again from scratch real quick since we're so close to the beginning. Okay. So we've got, did we get as far as the slip knot on the one end? We're anchored. Everyone's got that part anchored, cool. Okay, so then the other part is finding the wrist size. And you can kind of see, it looks like I'm a little twisted here. Um, you know, you can see there's a little bit of a curve almost to these bracelets, so you can kind of tell where the top is and where the bottom is. You can kind of see that there. Um, so, we're going to be wanting to make sure that the design is going to be on the top, which I guess I didn't say earlier. So it's a good thing we're starting here at this point. Um, and the end that has the two, the all the extra paracord sticking out, that is going to be the end you want to start by anchoring it down. So then we've got let me separate these here. A whole bunch of cords on side. And we've got our cords in the middle with the two ends. Are we all, that makes sense? Okay. Stuff out of the way so it's less distracting. All right. We are going to start with the left hand side. So we've got our left, and it's gonna go underneath these two in the middle. So it's going underneath them. And I'm gonna keep my hand here so that we're, it's kind of like we're making like a little bit of a four here. So you've got that shape. And it is gonna fall over this one here, this other one on your right side, this longer, longer one. I know that's hard to see. Um, it's over that. So then we take our right hand side and that is going to go through this loop that we've got going on the left hand side. So we're going to pull that through and then we're going to go ahead and tighten them up and make it nice and snug there up at the top. So we've now got these really nicely anchored in there. And again, this is a good time to check and make sure that it's going to fit around your wrist just in case you happen to slip a little while you were putting it together. So I recommend now that you've got one knot and it's not really going to slide much more to give yourself a little test. Make sure that it'll go around your wrist. And of course, I'm really clumsy here at doing this one handed. <laughs> Maybe you've got somebody at home who can help you. There we go. All right. So I'm feeling pretty good about this. There's some extra room there. You know, I can fit a few, a couple fingers under it. So it's not going to be too tight on me. All right. So we're going to go back to the way we had it set up. The, the top of our bracelet facing up. We're gonna, I'm gonna tape mine back down, but you can do yours however you want. If you want, you've got something weighing it down or if you got a clip on it or something. Um, this tape does not wanna stick. Okay, this will get easier as we go along, trust me. Okay, are we all on the same page? Yes. Good? Excellent, okay. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take, start from the right hand side now. <laughs> Got somebody waving in there, hello. So we're gonna take from the right hand side, we're gonna do like a backwards four, always going underneath 
this middle thread, these middle threads or cords, whatever. So we've got a loop on our right hand side now. And it's again going to go over the cord on the left. So under the middle, over the one on its opposite side. And then we're going to take the cord on the left, which is underneath the one we just brought over, and we're going to pull that through the loop on the right hand side. And we're going to tighten them on up. It looks a lot like uh, whenever you are just beginning to tie your shoe, except with the two threads in the middle of it. Yeah. And basically, we just keep doing this back and forth. So I'm going to do a few more, um, and you can do them along with me. So once again, and this is called the Cobra Weave, which sounds really cool. Um, if you don't know anything about paracord, this particular paracord, this is rated to hold up to 250 pounds. Um, so when I say that it can be used as survival, if you're wearing this and you unwrap, you need rope or something, if you happen to be out in the wilderness, <coughs> this is strong enough <coughs> to hold, <coughs> probably to hold your weight or to hold uh, maybe your backpack or something if you're trying to keep it off the ground or maybe you need to make a snare or something this is going to be much stronger than your average rope um, it also looks cooler so paracord can also come in thicker sizes it can be um, there's another there's another kind called 550 which is uh, designed to hold up to 550 pounds uh, so that's the pretty hardcore, like military grade stuff. But again, you can also make bracelets out of that just as easily as you make bracelets out of this stuff. All right, so I'm going to go back. We did one on the right side. Now we're going to go back to the left and we're doing it basically the exact same way we did our first stitch, which is going under here. So we got this loop sticking out and it's over the right hand cord and the right hand cord goes over and through. So again, just tying these knots. And you're starting to see already a pattern developing as you go down. Um, once you get used to it, you can kind of tell which side needs to come next if you happen to forget, like if you walked away from it for a second, which may have happened to me. Um, so yeah, we're alternating left and right. So now it's the right side turn. So again, going under the middle parts and over the left hand cord. And I'm taking my left hand cord and bringing it over and through the loop. Holding that down and tightening it up. We all doing okay? Let me see the cord. I'm gonna bring it up close to the camera. So this is where we're starting at right now. Um, doesn't look like much yet, but it'll come along. So I just did that side. Now I'm back to my left hand side. Again, going under the middle and over the right hand side. I'm going to take the right hand side and go through over and through the loop on the left and tighten them back up. Is everyone doing all right? Any questions? Everyone still? still Kinda. It's, I tried doing the knot again and it didn't work for some reason. Can you do the knot one more time? Sure. Um, which side are you start needing to start from? The right or the left? I'm doing the right. Megan's doing the left. So either one works. Okay. Okay. Well, right is the one I have coming up next. So I'm taking the cord on the right here. We're going under these. So I'll pull that through a little. So it's under those and over the left hand side. So I'm going to pull the left hand cord up and I'll go over 
the middle two and through this loop. You know, it's kind of hard to see. And then pulling it on. Yeah. And I'll do another left hand one here real quick. So, yeah, and we're starting with cord on the left. We're going underneath the middle two. Not staying put. So it's underneath the middle two and over the one on the opposite side. Now we're going to take our opposite cord that is underneath the cord we just moved, and we're going over the two middle and through the loop. And then we tighten it up. All right, thanks. That helps. Okay, excellent. And so basically, we just keep doing the same stitch until you get to the end. So I'm going to go ahead and continue working on this one, as you all will as well. And then I will show you what to do when you hit the end. And the end is the part where you'll probably need some assistance unless you're just super confident with fire. <laughs> so, you know, I feel like, yeah, totally, totally confident with fire. Deal with it all the time. So we're going under. Just ignore the announcements that are <laughs> happening. Oh, okay. Library is getting ready to close. And through. There we go. Okay. So over or under and over this over and through. Once you get the hang of these knots, this becomes really, really easy and something you can do pretty quick. Um, if you had a really long length of paracord, you could also make like a dog leash or a belt, um, all kinds of stuff really. There's a lot you could do with this. And there are a lot of other weaves out there too. Um, so you can um, look them up. Um, there's tons online. So you can do this with more than one color. You can do this with, um, you can make them much wider. You can do much more elaborate knots. Um, it's all kind of the same principle. Um, we're doing kind of the classic, like standard one. Um, again, called the cobra weave. It does get a little easier as your paracord gets shorter. Everyone still doing okay? Yeah. It's just you guys and us now. Uh -huh. We have iPhone left. Oh no. Yeah. Hopefully they weren't frustrated. Fire up here, here. We're gonna go outside for that. <gasps>
<laughs> I'm not gonna bring the house down, Gary. <laughs> I'm sure your parents appreciate that. But they're not here right now. They're off on a trip, so ha. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well then. Um, come the home to a house that's no longer there, right? Ah! House is on fire. You'll be like, I'm sorry, we were making paracord bracelets. Things <laughs> happened. It's okay. We can fix it. We have insurance. <laughs> that's, that's what it's for. I highly doubt it's going to work for the entire thing, though. Oh, we need. Side note if, this archived, <laughs> if you're watching this archived, if you're watching this archived, please do ask your parents for help. Uh, or, you know, or go outside and don't trust that your homeowner's insurance will automatically cover any catastrophes. Um, it's really not that crazy, I promise. I'm making it now sound like it's this huge, like, pyrotechnic event. It's, right. it's really not. It's just sealing off the ends with heat, um, which keeps them from unraveling. Boy, wouldn't it be funny if you were that just be hilarious, Megan. <laughs> do, you, do you have a suggestion for something I should set on fire? Okay. I don't set gum on fire, whatever you do. Gum is super annoying to hear burn. You know, I don't think I've ever seen gum burn. It's nasty. Oh, yeah, it stinks too. One year, our youth huh. uh, group did a camp and they had a gum log. See, the uh, counselors would give you gum throughout the day, and at the end of the day or at mealtime, you'd put it on a gum log and they burned Ooh. at the end of camp. And it was disgusting. It oh, I can only imagine. Yeah. That sounds yeah. gross. <laughs> was this pre pandemic? I'm going to guess this I'm was pre pandemic. <laughs> yes. I'm going to guess was. they. Yeah. This is last year, so. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, was the gum tree still on Truman's campus when you were there, Megan? I already got, like, struck by lightning and blown down by a truck. Blown down by the truck or something. Oh. Something got induced. Huh. I, that is what I heard. Or made up. I don't actually. <laughs> or made up. Well, it was there when I was on I campus. And it was disgusting. I'm just gonna say. I don't think I ever put a piece of gum on there. I didn't touch that tree. <laughs> I brushed my hands lovingly across it on my way across campus every day. Did you now? No, I didn't. Okay, good, because that would be gross. <laughs> All right. See, this is why I want to be a great radio host. Because you just, I just, just have random chatter. Stuff. You can't see my face, so it's all perfect. <laughs> you like being a disembodied voice. I really do. I enjoyed it quite a bit. You should just all be right. like the at... host for a video game or something, you know? Yeah. Wow, oh, that would be cool. That would be fun. Okay. All right, Corey, does your hard bracelet still fit? Let's find out. You're fast. It looks like it does. Hey, this fits much better than the last one I made. Last one I made was like huge. This one actually turned out to fit pretty well. Woohoo! So exciting. Cool. Yes, is there Megan? Yes. <laughs> That's the last step Would for you like me. Would you like to hand it or throw I can get up and grab them. All right. <laughs> Play with fire, throwing scissors. Such a setting a great example for everyone. Yeah. Breaking out the big guns. Boom. Look at that thing. Might use some keys too to flatten it. All right. Finally, How y'all doing? Perfectly. Good. Nice. The last one I made like five years ago did not fit at all and still doesn't fit me. 
but this one feels great. <laughs> awesome. Yay. So I don't know if you've made one before. Do you remember what you have to do to to when you trim up the ends? Yeah, uh, you just cut the ends. I'm pretty sure. Then you uh, use lighter to melt them together, right? That is exactly what you do. Yeah. So I'm gonna do that now. Um, this is the part where yes, if you, I recommend you know probably having somebody help. It is. <laughs> Confident and careful. You can trim off your ends. And I have this torch lighter here I'm going to use for lighting my ends. If I can get it to work. No, I can't take it off. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's no good. Yeah. So you can the end all nice and melty here. Melted my end, and I'm going to use my keys here to kind of mash it down, mash this plastic down, because yeah, I don't really want to like stick my hands in it. Although it cools off pretty fast. That end is sealed, and then I got this other little bit here. I'm also going to melty with. But yeah, don't burn your house down, you know. Also, don't set your paracord on fire if you can help it. You don't need to melt it to itself. Really, all you need to do is kind of mush it and flatten it out. And that'll kind of help it hold its spot in there, in addition to also keeping it from leaving. Because if you don't, um, and you have a raw edge, you can kind of see how the interior just slides right on out and you don't want that. That's no good. Burning the end here, I can uh, burn an end without it being attached to a bracelet and just kind of show you. So I'm going to cut out the middle, trim it up here. So flat end, got a lighter here. And I don't know how easy that is to see. It probably isn't. It melts fairly quickly. You don't need to set it on fire. You just want to grab something that is relatively heat resistant and mash it down. You can always do it again if it didn't take. It does cool off fairly quickly, so you can touch it again pretty quick. It's just like right away when it's still like bubbling. Don't touch it then. But after that, it's pretty, pretty okay. And then it's solid, it's not coming loose. And it also is what you do to finish a bracelet. So hooray. And that is paracord bracelets. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna switch my camera back to me. I can say bye. All right, so that didn't take very long at all. Um, we had originally scheduled this for like two hours and I don't know what I was thinking because this is not that hard and it doesn't take that long. So um, I thank you for coming and grabbing a paracord kit and I'm glad that yours fits you. Um, and I hope that if you are watching this um, as an archive video that you were able to get the hang of it. And if you didn't, uh, please feel free to email me at watersc at mrrl.org and I can try and help walk you through or link you to a really good tutorial because there are a bunch of those online. And yeah, that is it for today. We've got more stuff coming up next month. We're gonna make um, some DIY fit, uh, paper infinity cubes. Um, they're kind of like the fidget toys where you can keep turning them and turning them and they all fold oh. back into a box. Um, so we're making those and what else are we doing next month? The dot oh, and we're gonna do um, painted dot mandalas. So it'll be a cool painting activity also. So keep an eye on the calendar um register for those we'll be making kits and uh yeah that's all, all right. i got for today all right all right thanks for coming mm -hmm. bye have a good one don't burn your house down